moved over here. Uh, so I'll introduce myself for, for those of you that are, are new, you know, in the last 25 years started coming here. Uh, I'm Chaplain Matt Christensen, and uh, it's a great honor and a privilege to be here with you today. As I was talking with Pastor Biltman a while back, uh, we realized that uh, Jessica and I were going to be able to make it here for Christmas for the first time in 20 years. We made it back to the valley for Christmas. And then he said, uh, as, as wise pastors do, hey, would you like to cover for me the Sunday after Christmas? And I was like, well, that's great. I haven't had an opportunity to, you know, preach in, in quite some time based on, you know, my job now in the, in the Army is to go to school for a year. And so I was, was itching at an opportunity, and uh, he may have been looking for an opportunity for a little bit of a break after the, the Christmas season. So it worked out great. Uh, so I want to welcome all of you here today just a, a little bit so that, that you kind of understand uh, you know, Army chaplains, I'm endorsed by the mission branch of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, and so uh, I have an opportunity to go into the mission field of the U.S. Army and then serve the soldiers and families uh, that, are, that are in the, the Army right now. I've been doing that since 2009, uh, so as, as time flies by, uh, you know, I've been doing that for, I guess, a little over 10 years now. And then uh, from, from where we are now, uh, I'll finish up school at Fort Leavenworth and then we'll go to Fort Jackson, South Carolina. And I get the great opportunity to mentor uh, and, and help teach and train new chaplains that'll be coming into the, the Army uh, for the next couple of years. So great opportunity. But most importantly, today we get to continue our Christmas celebration thinking about what it means that God has come into our world in the person of Jesus Christ. And today we're going to begin our time together with singing Silent Night. Silent Night. We're going to continue with our invocation, confession, and absolution. And what I'm going to do today as we go into our time of confession, I'm actually going to read through uh, the Ten Commandments out of Deuteronomy. And as I'm reading through those commandments, 
Uh, please take that opportunity to think of the ways that we have sinned against God and against our fellow human beings. We make our beginning today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your name. And at this time, Lord, we take the opportunity to consider our sinful condition before you and the many and various ways that we have sinned against one another. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, it says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or daughter, or your male servant or female servant, or your ox or donkey, or any of your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates, that you that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be long and that it may go well with you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, and you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not desire your neighbor's house, his field, or his male servant, or his female servant, his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. Let's pray. Lord God, merciful Heavenly Father, we humbly confess before you and before one another the incredible ways that we creatively sin. Lord, we look to you seeking your grace and your mercy. We know that only through the coming of Christ Jesus, his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection, can we stand before you and give thanks because you have forgiven us all of our sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We give you the thanks and the praise and the glory. Amen. We'll continue with, What Child Is This? Shepherds, God, and angels sing. Hey, 
Good morning. And I uh, hope you all had a very Merry Christmas. Christmas. The Old Testament reading today, the first Sunday after Christmas, is from Isaiah, chapter 61 and 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, and he has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diatom in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson is from Galatians chapter four. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right. I'm kind of a traditionalist, so I'm going to invite you all to, to stand for the, for the gospel reading. It's part of that, that military background, following the, following the protocol. So this is uh, the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everyone, everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated as we continue with our next song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O 
title for the sermon today, It's a Wonderful Life, question mark, question mark, question mark. The text for today is from Luke chapter 2, and there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. Let's pray. Lord God, merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to be gathered together in your name, celebrating once again the birth of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we listen to your word today, Lord, we just pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds, that we would allow your Holy Spirit to increase our faith in you, and that you would show us ways in which we can reach out to our neighbor with your love. In Jesus' name, amen. 
It's a Wonderful Life. The movie came out back in 1940-something, and it actually wasn't that big of a hit when it first came out. But the reality is today, the movie It's a Wonderful Life is one of the most influential Christmas movies ever made in the United States. It's a Wonderful Life. If you've seen it, you already start thinking about the various scenes with George Bailey and Mr. Potter and all of the things that took place. And the truth is, if you haven't seen it, for the message today, the big things that you need to know are that George Bailey always wanted to leave the little town that he grew up in called Bedford Falls. He was constantly trying to get out there to do something significant, something important. His destiny could not possibly be in this small little town where he ended up taking over the family business, the savings and loan from his father. And Mr. Potter also lived in this area. He was the banker. He was the rich, evil guy who was trying to pull all the money that he could from the community. And Bailey was this guy who would help people out. If they needed a a house loan, if they needed a loan to keep their business going, if they had a loan and things were getting rough and they couldn't make a payment, he was the one they could go and talk to and he would say, hey, hit us up next month or or the following month. But George Bailey, as he lived his life, he always wanted to get out of Bedford Falls. But early on, when his brother fell through the ice and he dove in to rescue him, he developed an ear infection. And that ear infection caused him to lose his hearing. And so when the time came when everybody was enlisting to go to war, George Bailey was marked unfit for duty because he couldn't hear out of one of his ears. And so he stayed in Bedford Falls. When the family business came up and someone needed to run it, There he was. As he was getting married to his wife, Mary, and they were planning to go on a vacation, on a honeymoon to get out of Bedford Falls, they had to take the honeymoon money to support the business. No matter what happened, no matter what took place, George Bailey could not get out of Bedford Falls. Well, as things progressed and as the storyline goes, He found himself in a unique situation where it seemed that his business was going to collapse. There was a run. Everybody was pulling their money out of the bank. And he had to work hard and diligently to to convince people not to pull all of their money out. And they finally made it to closing time. And they had just survived. They had $8,000 that needed to be deposited in Potter's bank. And so George Bailey trusted his uncle to go and to make the deposit. And as the uncle goes in, he taunts Mr. Potter a little bit in his office, and he has the money wrapped up in the paper, and you see him forget to grab the money as he leaves. And he doesn't know what he's done with the money, and of course, Mr. Potter, as the great villain that he is, pockets that money because he knows that it's going to be the downfall of George Bailey and the savings and loan. Well, as George finds out, it's Christmas Eve, and he can't celebrate with his family because he knows that his downfall is right around the corner. The scandal is coming. Where did the $8,000 go? It can't be found. He's in big trouble. And George goes to the bar, and he gets intoxicated. He jumps in his vehicle, he drives away, he crashes into a tree, and he hits this low point, the moment of despair. And he sees a bridge, and he decides that he's going to take his life. And in that moment of despair, he goes toward the bridge, and he thinks to himself, I'm better off dead than alive. And we wonder, is it really a wonderful life for George Bailey? Let's think for a moment about Anna, the prophetess. You see, Anna, in our gospel reading for today, 
Is she living a wonderful life? Think about what happens to Anna. She goes and she does all of the things that she's supposed to do. She gets married probably as a very young girl. And she lives with her husband for seven years. And then he dies, leaving her as a widow. And I wonder if initially her prayers weren't, Lord, send me someone to be my husband. I wonder if she went to the temple every day in fasting and in prayer. She was praying for something significant to happen. But as the years went on, Anna simply went to the temple and prayed and fasted day after day, probably for 50 or 60 years years. Imagine yourself in her shoes. Wouldn't it be discouraging to go each and every day to the temple to pray and to fast and to see nothing significant happening, nothing big changing? I wonder if she thought to herself, is it a wonderful life? How about each one of us as we've gone through the notorious year of 2020. You see, last Christmas, we were gathering together with no masks. We were gathering in households. We were giving hugs and high fives and shaking hands. We were smiling at each other in the grocery stores. We were able to do all kinds of things last Christmas. But the year 2020 has caused many of us to say, is it really a wonderful life? How many of us go each and every day and we pray that things will return to normal? How many of us pray that the day will soon come when we can take off the masks, when we can have large family gatherings, when we can commune together receiving Christ's body and blood without all of the protocol and the things that have been put in place? And we say to one another, is it really a wonderful life? And what if we could look back over our lives? What if we could go back and see things played out as we lived our lives? And I don't know about most of you, but I can think of all of the things that I've done wrong throughout my life and how they have impacted others. What if we looked back over our lives and everything that we had done wrong, we could see the ultimate consequences of our sin? Would we look at each other and say, it's a wonderful life? Or would we fall into despair and like George Bailey, decide that maybe it would be better to commit suicide and end it all? Now as the movie, It's a Wonderful Life progresses, there's an interesting turn of events that takes place. You see, as George Bailey is going to jump off of the bridge, his wife and his daughter are back home saying a prayer. And the answer to that prayer is a quirky angel, Clarence, who comes and decides the best way to rescue George is to jump in the river himself. And George reacts and responds like he did when his brother was in the river. He dives in and he saves Clarence out of the river and then this angel, and the theology is terrible. He's not, there's no such thing as trying to earn your wings. But the point of what he does is very significant because he allows George to see what life would be like in Bedford Falls if he had never been born. And so George goes into the town, which by the way is now called Pottersville, and he goes to all of these locations and he interacts with people that he's known all of his life and they are completely different, changed. Each one of them for the worse. You see, George Bailey didn't realize that throughout his life he was actually doing significant things in his community. And the fact that he was never allowed to leave meant that he was able to do some things and help some people that had great impact. 
And as he goes and he sees all of the terrible things that take place, he starts to realize that maybe his life is significant, that maybe he should go back home and see what he can do about this $8,000. And what's interesting about this story is that I've watched it for many, many years, and I always thought, well, the hero of the story is George Bailey, right? Because everything that he does turns out to be significantly positive for his community. But the reality is there's someone working behind the scenes that is the true hero of It's a Wonderful Life. And it happens to be his wife, Mary. You see, Mary is the one who sacrificially gives up the money for the honeymoon to support the family business. Mary is the one who prays with her daughter as George runs out to go get drunk on Christmas Eve. And oh, by the way, Mary is the one who gathers up the townspeople and tells them the terrible situation and the $8,000 and everyone pitches in so that when George Bailey goes back to his family, he not only receives his wife and his children, but he is also met by his friends who have gathered up the $8,000 so that they can save the business. And we watch the movie and we say, wow, it's a wonderful life. Well, how about for that prophetess, Anna? You see, we have the privilege now that we get to go back into Scripture and we get to see that all of those years where she was going to the temple and praying and fasting, God takes all of those years all of that frustration, all of that time. And he says, here, you get to see Christ Jesus coming into the world, the redemption of Israel and Jerusalem, and not only that, as Simeon tells us, for all of the Gentiles as well. God in human flesh breaking into our world, and all of the sudden, Anna can say, it's a wonderful life. Every minute of every day, praying and fasting and fasting and praying, it was all worth it. God at work behind the scenes, it's a wonderful life. What if we could see a replay of 2020 through God's eyes? What if we could see the ways that God is working in our communities, in our families, in our nation, and in our world despite the spreading of COVID? What if we could see all of those people who were brought to despair, but then someone like you called them on the phone or said hi to them in the store or shared a little bit of your hope and your happiness with them? If we could see through God's eyes a replay of what is going on, how he is using each one of us in our world, even in 2020, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, in the midst of everything that we're going through, we would shout out, it's a wonderful life. And even if we were to replay our life story, where we would focus on all of the things that we have done wrong, God would show us all the ways that his Holy Spirit continues to work through us. What if we could see all of the ways and all of the people who have been impacted by what we think are simple prayers, by what we think are simple gestures of kindness? If we could see God at work behind all of that, we would even look at our simple lives and say, it's a wonderful life. You see, God has given us our lives, and he so treasures each one of us that he was willing to send Christ Jesus into this world to suffer in our place, to receive within himself all of our sicknesses, all of our diseases. He gives us a wonderful life. And as we look forward to the day of his return, we can look forward knowing that this wonderful life only gets better. We can look forward to it knowing that everything we do today and tomorrow and the next day 
Well, it has continuity and impact even in the life to come. You see, because Jesus came in human flesh into our world, it shows us that not only our bodies, but this earth, this world goes on into eternity. Everything that we do now matters as God's Holy Spirit works within each one of us. It is truly a wonderful life. Amen. continue our service today with the confession of our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand as we confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we'll have uh, some music as we think about uh, what God has blessed us with. And if you so choose, there are offering boxes that as you leave, uh, you can place your offering there today. Will your grace run out? If I let you down, cause all I know is how to run. So I am a sinner if it's not one thing, it's another. Caught up in words, tangled in love. Savior, and you take brokenness aside and make it beautiful, beautiful. 
you. In uh, your bulletin insert, you'll find a list of uh, people and, and things to, to pray for, and we'll use that for the basis of our prayers today. Um, I'll pray in petition at the end of each of the petitions. I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, if the congregation will please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, today we lift up to you those with cancer and those who are going through treatments. We ask that you would give them strength, comfort, and complete healing and recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you would give strength, comfort, and healing to those with health concerns and their families. We pray for those who are hospitalized or recovering from surgery. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID-19. We ask that you would be with all of those who have other health concerns. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we pray for those who have recently lost loved ones. We would ask that you would just give them a sure and certain hope of the resurrection to come. Today we lift up the friends and families of Herbert Larry Smith. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, as people are, are traveling, we ask that you would just be with uh, all of those who are moving from one place to another, whether it be by vehicle or airplane or whatever the mode of transportation, Lord, we ask for safe travel. We ask that you would just be uh, with everyone who is spending time with family and friends at this time, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we lift up to you this congregation. We lift up to you all of the things that are taking place. We pray for Pastor Biltman and, and everything that he is doing here. Lord, we give you thanks for him and his family. We ask that you would just give wisdom to the call committee that you would be with the, the church staff and all of the ministries, Lord, with the, the school, with the Stephen ministry. We just ask uh, for, your, for your strength and encouragement, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all those who are doing mission work in various parts of the world, Lord. Strengthen them, embolden them, give them opportunities to share your grace and your mercy, Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, as we consider our elected officials and those who are providing governance for our nation, Lord, we lift up our, our president, our, our Congress, our Senate. We lift up our uh, courts. We ask that you would just be with them, help them to make good decisions uh, that honor your will and your desire for how we should live our lives. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we give you thanks that you once again have allowed us to celebrate the birth of Christ Jesus. We thank you that you have broken into our world, that you have done so to give us a wonderful life. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, for all these things and everything that is on our hearts and minds, we lift up to you, trusting in your grace and mercy. We pray these things in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, and we pray together the prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our sending song for today is appropriate. Joy to the world.
Do we have any announcements that need to be made this morning? Okay, seeing none. Go in peace and serve the Lord by serving your neighbor. Amen. <laughs>